I'm looking for one of those nines, please. No can be. Bullshit. Jen. Bullshit. No, you did. Jen. No, you did not. Fifty and you had the six. God damn. I knew it too. I knew you had it. I knew it. I saw it. I saw it on your face. Put it down. 86. I'm getting better. Because you're lying. to lie. Yeah, well, you lie for a living, poop butt. The fact that Alma was coming from documentary background, I think it was probably the reason why Shia chose her. Because she is, a, you know, she was a documentary director, uh, but also with a very specific sensibility and poetry to her work. We were doing a movie, we had a script that was actually written by Shia, and we had dialogue, but there were still a lot of uh, things that were more free-flowing in the way uh, that, you know, he would perform and use the space and interact with a, with a kid. It was really interesting to approach it with this documentary uh, gaze, in a way, so that we could let them free uh, in the space to do their thing without us manipulating it or trying to construct it and instead being more observing and capturing. Um, so I think that that's what gave the movie this feeling of, you know, realness and honesty and rawness. We were using Alexa Mini. Uh, you know, the, the, the main challenges were mostly in the hotel room because it was so small and because we had Shia interacting with the kid. The dialogue was scripted, but we didn't know what they were gonna do in the space. And Shia, he uses the space in a very interesting way because he's there, you know, don't, this character feels stuck there, like he doesn't wanna be in that room, like he, he's trapped. So from a dramaturgic point of view, it's amazing. Uh, as a cinematographer on set, it's like, oh my God, he's moving all over the place, what am I gonna do? So for me, my, you know, my main challenge, and uh, a very exciting one, was how do I do to support this approach? I don't want to limit him in any way. Uh, I think every decision he's doing, moving all over, is fantastic miss and send decision. I felt very responsible as a cinematographer to create an environment that was supporting him on that process. So how do you do that without creating a very flat 360 degrees lighting so that you make sure that you see the eyes wherever he goes? So I replaced all the practical lights with LED lights and um, I used transmitters and receivers and so I was in my monitor with a set of dimmers and I could control all those lights. So I would prepare for one possible scenario that I imagine and then um, depending on what he was doing I was literally like a DJ, you know, like jamming with the dimmers uh, around what he was doing. So if suddenly he goes to the other corner, you know, these lights I switch it off or I dim it down slowly and this one becomes the key and so in that way I could support the emotions with the lighting so I could still have you know very kind of dark lighting but have a little bit on the eyes and you know I could just that it was really like a dance of light that I would do live and yeah every take would be different because he would do different things. I, um, I designed uh, two special lads with my colorist Alex Bickle from Color Collective in New York. So we worked on the LATS and we were trying to emulate uh, Kodak 200 and get this kind of a bit, you know, more photochemical and also a little bit warm, nostalgic childhood feeling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we work a little bit back and forward designing the loot and then we just use that LAT for the whole movie. So that was kind of my negative. And um, I normally do everything in camera. I have my DIT on set. Uh, who doesn't have to do a lot because it's all about creating the light, really. But you know, he sometimes I ask him make it a bit darker, you know, so I don't have to like super underexpose on the moment. But I know we're gonna print it down and like small adjustments, and then we send that to editorial with the lookup table and all our corrections. So when they're watching for months and months in the edit, they're seeing it how very close to what we're gonna do at the end. And then when we go to color correction, you know, already is the same language because. The colorist created the lad, so it's his color science. And it's really then the color correction is time for adjusting, for doing some mass whenever you didn't have time to do things in lighting, but you, the look is already there. How do you think it feels to have my son paying me? How do you think that feels? You wouldn't be here if I didn't pay you. <laughs> 